Hello, my name is Dr. Eric Lindquist and I'm the founder and CEO of Sonopath.com. This is my website. I would hope you would take a look at it and everything it can do for you in veterinary medicine, all aspects of veterinary medicine, not just clinical sonography. But today we're going to talk about uh, diagnosing portosystemic shunt by ultrasound. And uh, diagnosing portosystemic shunt by ultrasound has traditionally been found to be a difficult issue. But uh, on the other hand, I would say that it's really not that difficult as long as you can get into the portal hilus and see what you need to see. And structures that get in the way are the transverse and ascending colon primarily. And of course, uh, if you don't spread out the pressure on the uh, scanning hand, then what happens is the patient doesn't want you in there. It ends up being uncomfortable for them. So if you can work with the patient and displace the ascending and, uh, and transverse colon, then you can get the images that you need. So. Uh, to look at a normal animal in the portal hepatis, we should see a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio with the portal vein, vena cava, and aorta. And you need to work at it to get this image as much as you can, or at least get the portal vein with the vena cava and the vena cava to the aorta, so you can compare the three. Again, they're supposed to have roughly a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio, or more exactly based on the research, 0.85 to 1 should be a normal ratio between the portal vein and the vena cava, or the portal vein and the aorta. If you have a big vena cava here, something is happening that is causing excessive flow or the animal sedated and or getting a lot of fluid therapy or something else to cause the dilation of the vena cava. But in a normal volemic animal that is not sedated, then we should have a one to one to one ratio, portal vein to vena cava to aorta. And if we look at a video of that, we can see portal vein coming in, vena cava, and this little tubular structure above on the screen or ventral in the animal um, that does not pick up color flow is the common bile duct. So there are basically three tubes here, common bile duct that doesn't pick up color, portal vein and vena cava that do, the aorta is down here to where you can't be seen. Now in this patient that I was scanning, it was a three-year-old cat, or two-and-a-half-year-old cat that was not doing right. He, had, uh, um, he was lethargic, anorexic, and bile acids of 150 on a pre and 230, 240 on a post. And so we needed to differentiate diffuse liver disease from uh, the presence of portosystemic shunting. Now, regarding extrahepatic shunts, this scheme works. Intrahepatic shunts, it doesn't. Intrahepatic shunts, are, you're going to have the same ratio because the shunt is over here, it's cranial. So the portal vein vena cava aortic ratio will be one to one to one. But in, a, in an extrahepatic portosystemic shunt that involves the vena cava, which are most of the shunts, the vena cava becomes large. It becomes larger than the aorta. In fact, it's a 1.5 to one ratio now because the aorta is 0.5 centimeters and the vena cava in this position is 0.73. Now you can compress the vena cava with manual compression and sort of alter that ratio. So you really have to let, let up and, and let that vena cava dilate to as much as it's going to dilate. But the beautiful thing about this vena cava is it works as a template. You can target this because it's a big structure. Instead of going to look after a small portal vein, you look after the vena cava and you can back into the shunt because we know that the shunt is feeding the vena cava because the volume is excessive. So we look at a video of this same cat, vena cava, and I follow that back until just caught a little portal hepatis. In my experience, it's usually about a centimeter, a centimeter and a half from where the portal vein goes into the, uh, into the uh, portal hilus. That's usually where the shunts are going to be. And it's this vessel here, it's a vertical vessel, and this is a residual portal vein. So the normal portal vein comes in, it's draining the, uh, the splanchnic um, organs, um, the intestine, and so forth. Uh, and the, in this case, the splenic vein should be coming into the portal vein right here, but what happens is it forms this shunt and heads dorsally. Dorsally is on the bottom, ventrally is on top. And so it moves away from the probe, and it dumps into this overwhelming vena cava. I'm going to look at that one more time. We're going to see more images of this, so don't get too upset if you don't see it immediately. Now we drop some color over it. We can see that it's driving right into the vena cava. 
And the color is key here because there's a normal vessel called the hepatic artery uh, that comes up and it is red because it comes out of the aorta and flow is towards the transducer. So flow towards the transducer is going to be red, but flow away from the transducer is going to be blue. And the key to finding portosystemic shunts is that all shunts, majority of them, at least in the body, are blue because they're flowing away from the flow, just like this. You can see this is a still where portal vein here, normal portal vein, meets with a splenic vein and shunts away. And then you have the residual portal vein here because blue is away, so we know it's going away from the transducer and it dumps in the vena cava, which comes in right here. We can see that without color again. Residual portal vein, original portal vein, splenocable shunt. And the other thing about abnormal vessels is that they are squiggly. Whether you have primary or secondary shunting, they are not straight. You know, like vena cava is straight. It's going, knows where it needs to go. It's going in the straight direction. Whereas shunts, they usually have a twist to them or they're irregular. Now, if you had multiple irregular vessels, then you have to think about secondary shunting. But we're talking about primary extrahepatic portosystemic shunting in this scheme. Splenocaval shunt, because we know it goes in the cava. Starts where the splenic vein enters into the portal vein and goes in the cava. The other type of shunt that happens less frequently is called a gastrocaval. comes off the left gastric vein, which um, makes this big looping uh, contour and dumps into the vena cava. But this is the most common type of shunt out there is the splenocaval shunt. And you can see it's only about a centimeter in length. So you can see how easy uh, less than a half inch. So you can see how easy it is to miss and, and it sits right where the ascending and transverse colon are. So that is where it is difficult to find on ultrasound because the colon's always in the way or the patient doesn't want you in there. So again, normal, one to one, abnormal vena cava size, follow the vena cava back until you have a vessel that comes in that's not supposed to be there. Drop the color over it, it's going to be blue, or at least majority of it's blue until it hits the mosaic pattern because of the turbulence. And you can confirm it that way. And of course, clinical signs typically go along with it. And this is a case that was referred to surgery. Unfortunately, it had severe heart disease, so it wasn't going, it was only going to be treated medically. But you can also measure out the width, the maximum width of this shunt. And in this case, it's 0.9 centimeters. And this is crucial information for the surgeon so he knows what size amyloid constrictor or cellophane band to use. So that's how you diagnose a portosystemic shunt, an extrapatic portosystemic shunt, that is, on ultrasound. And if you'd like to see anything regarding ultrasound or internal medicine, I invite you to come to sonopath.com and take a look at the clinical search tutorial or our community forum tutorial where you can post images and videos. And this was a recent post. Or you can look at different posts regarding ultrasound education or business or just about anything that you want. But the key thing is, if you want to learn about shunts or basically any pathology at all, just type it into the pathology search and search it out and see what comes up. And there are tons of cases in there just like the one we looked at today that will help you diagnose a portosystemic shunt on ultrasound or clinically because all the clinical information is there. You don't have to do ultrasound to get great benefits out of this website and all of the video runs in line. You don't have to wait for download time or third parties. It's all within the site. So I hope you take a look and thanks for joining me today regarding ultrasound diagnosis of extrapatic porous systemic shunts. Have a great day.